So I recently finished teaching our second semester calculus-based physics course. It was the first time I had taught the class in a while, and it's the first time I taught the class since adopting GlowScript. And so I wanted to share some of the codes we developed in that class to help students visualize electric and magnetic fields. This first code is a simple one to show the electric field from a point charge. So we are defining a single source charge here. Uh, we're going to make it positive. We're giving it a positive charge here. QE is just the fundamental charge. So it's the 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Um, we're placing this slightly off from the origin. So uh, five nanometers away from the origin and we're giving it a radius of one nanometer. So this is tiny, tiny. We are working on the nanoscale here so that we can use the full fledged one over four pi epsilon naught, nine times 10 to the nine up here. Um, and the way we're going to visualize the electric field is in a circle. So we're going to make a circle going around the point charge. That's the purpose of this theta business over here. We're going to go from zero to two pi in increments of pi over six. So that'll give us 12 um, observation points. And we're making our circle have a radius of 10 to the minus eight. So this point charge is inside of the circle, but it's slightly off center. That's going to be important in a little bit. And so all we have to do is loop over theta. We're going to start with theta equal to zero, go up to theta equals two pi. And then we are basically creating a set of observation points. So the each observation point is going to be given by the circle's radius times cosine theta times sine of theta. This is all going to be in the xy plane. So our z is going to be kept at zero. Um, and then what we need is the separation vector between the observation point and the source point. So if you're familiar with Jackson's electrodynamics, this is R minus R prime. Or if you're in an intro class, this is the vector that points from the source to the observation point. In fact, I can make that clearer here, can't I? I can go vector from source to observation points. So the, the point you're starting at is always the thing that is uh, being subtracted and the destination is always the thing being subtracted from. Um, now that will give us a magnitude and a direction because both of these are vectors and we need a unit vector that just has the direction. So that's why we set up this r hat here. You can always get a unit vector by taking vector divided by its magnitude. And then we calculate E, the electric field, using the point charge formula. So it's one over four pi epsilon naught. We called it K in high school, but matter and interactions insists on writing it one over four pi epsilon naught times the source charge, or the, the charge value of the source charge, I should say, divided by the magnitude of the distance squared. So this is good old Coulomb's law. We multiply it by R hat to give it a direction. And then we want to visualize it, so we create this arrow here. Arrows have a position and, a, and an axis length that gives both the length and the direction. And so that's going to be given by E times the scale factor. So E is in different units than our visual physical space. So we have the scale factor here just to make E visible. And uh, 3 times 10 to the minus 16 is the um, value suggested by the textbook. And then we increment theta so, we, so that we can continue on with our loop here. If I hit control two, I'll run the code. And lo and behold, we get our, our circle of observation points. So each of these arrows represents an observation point. Um, you notice they're all pointing away from the point charge. That's because electric field goes away from positive charges and toward negative charges. And uh, the closer our observation point is to the charge, the stronger it is. So we have a longer arrow over here representing a stronger electric field. We have shorter arrows over here representing a weaker electric field. Um, if we brought them all closer, uh, let's say we make this radius 0 0.9, they would all become stronger. Notice we get a little bit longer arrows now this time. Let's make that even close. Let's make it like a 0.7 times 10 to the minus eight. There we go, we definitely get some longer arrows there. Um, so this is interesting. Um, this is uh, one of the first codes you need to make in a physics two course. Uh, and as always, it's available in the description below. But it would be nice to be able to add more point charges. And that's what we're gonna do in our second code in this video. 
So here's our expanded version of this code, point charges, plural. It has the exact same setup as before. We're creating a point charges or a point charge as a sphere here. And we're doing the same calculation here with one over four pi epsilon naught Q over R squared times R hat. That's all working the same way. The only difference is instead of having a single source, we now have a list called sources. Lists are wonderful things in Python because you can place anything into a list, including a sphere from vPython. You can have a list of spheres. We're also adding on the charge as an attribute of the sphere itself. So instead of having this Q source down here, we can just have the uh, source.q. So it's the Q attached to that particular source. And so down here, what we have to do is instead of calculating one electric field, we need to calculate an electric field for every source in the list sources. So this for loop is going to go around and around uh, down the list of point charges in the sources list. And it's going to add that point charges contribution to the electric field here and then we'll get an arrow out just like we had before. Now this is the exact same setup we had before. This is a single point charge with the same value. So this will give us the same result that we had last time. And lo and behold, we get the same thing. So it's treating that the same way. You always wanna start out with a problem you know the answer to. But now what I can do that's a little more interesting is add more point charges. So let's suppose I just copy and paste this. Let's suppose I make an identical charge uh, but let's place it at positive 0.5 times 10 to the minus eight. So we're placing an identical charge um, on the other side of the circle. So let's hit control two. And you notice our electric field is now symmetric. We've got a large electric field over here. We've got a large electric field over here. It's a little bit weaker here while we're farther from the two point charges. Here again, we're weaker because we're farther from the two point charges, but it's symmetric um, going around this way and going around this way because we've got the same two charges. Now I can make this charge a different value. Let's suppose I make it stronger than the other one. So let's suppose I make this charge two times the, uh, the fundamental charge. So this thing has two protons, this thing has one proton. Run it with control two. And you notice we get a stronger electric field over on this side because this uh, point charge is stronger than the one over on the left. I suppose I could indicate that by making this bigger, but I'm more interested in setting up a dipole. So the way you set up an electric dipole is by having two point charges with the same amount of charge, but one is the negative of the other. So the same charge magnitude, but one is the negative of the other. Um, and when I was growing up, electrons were always colored green and protons were always colored red. So we'll make this one red and this one green and we'll hit control two and we get a very different result. We get this dipole pattern. Um, now this is messing up a little bit because my scale factor is off because this, uh, arrows originating from here and then shooting through here. So there's nothing significant about that electric field arrow shooting between the two uh, point charges. Uh, let's make a little adjustment to our scale factor. Maybe let's reduce that by a third. Okay, there we go. That's a little bit better. Not entirely happy with that. Let's, um, let's do this. Let's put the scale factor back but then let's increase the radius of the circle. Let's say two times 10 to the minus eight. And this is what you do on a code like this. You just play around with these values until you get um, a result that you are happier with. Um, yeah, that's a bit better. I like that better. So you see the electric field lines are going away from the positive charge and going into the negative charge, which is pretty cool. And of course, we're getting stronger electric field when we are closer to the charges and when we than we do when we are farther away from them. Now we don't have to stop there. That's the dipole. We can also create a quadrupole. So if I copy and paste these, I can then move them. Let's see, how shall we move them? Let's move them in the Z directions. Let's scoot these two over uh, into the page a little bit. Um, let's have them go uh, negative 0 0.5 E negative eight. So what we're going to do is have these two move into the page a bit, and then we're going to have these two come out of the page a little bit by the same amount. There we go. So now I'm making a square of charges. Now I do need to switch a couple of these around because in a quadrupole, you've got to have 
the like charges on opposite corners. So I need to have my two positives, my two reds, to be on opposite corners. So this one, this red one's on the negative negative. This red one is also, is now on the positive positive. So those are gonna be on opposite corners. This green one is gonna be on positive negative. This one's gonna be on negative positive. And that's why I like to have my charges color coded so I can easily keep track of them. And here we go with the quadrupole field. This is pretty cool. So we've got a, uh, let's see, we've got our, our positive negative, negative positive, uh, opposite corners like we expect. And our field is very different looking now. Um, although now I'm wondering, do I need to do it like this or do I need to do these in the X, Y plane? I think I need to move those to the X, Y plane. I mean, it's, it's the correct result either way. So this is one way to look at the field. Um, let's flip these folks into the X, Y plane. So let's put that over here, comma, and then I'll move this guy. So let's take that comma too. Do control X to cut, control V to paste. And this is just getting us the field basically in the plane of the quadrupole. Let's do control X, control V. All right, I think that's set up correctly. I'll be able to tell from the visual. Okay, yeah, yeah, I've got these set up in opposite corners. And now we've got a very different looking field. So we've got electric field coming out of this corner coming out of this corner, going into this corner, going into this corner. And you don't have to stop there. You can also create an octopole, but I think I'll save that for a future video. Um, so this gives you an idea of the electric field as you go around the charge configuration. You can put whatever kind of charges you want inside the circle at whatever locations you want. Um, what we're gonna look at next time is how this electric field behaves as we get farther away from the charge distribution. And we'll take a look at some graphs to see how the electric field dies off. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.